we're going to be doing is just going over how you create a three frame looping animation and bringing it into motion for um, final uh, movement and uh, keyframing. Uh, your homework assignment today will be to take like a fruit that you find online, here's a strawberry, uh, and go ahead and rotoscope that or trace it uh, in three frames in Photoshop and then export that three frame loop to motion and I'll go ahead and have this uh, fruit bounce. So this is a bouncing fruit exercise. Now you can just go online and find a fruit. I found this strawberry and I'm just going to shift command four to take a screenshot of it or you can just drag it onto your desktop. We're going to go into Photoshop and start a new file. We know that it's 1920 by 1080. We're going to hit create. Uh, if you don't see your motion timeline already here, just go to Windows Workspace and select motion and if it's changed go ahead and reset it uh, as normal we're going to go ahead and start with our we're going to need a video layer so we're going to go to layers video layer and we're going to create a new where is it blank video layer uh, we know right away that um, we're going to need it at 12 frames per second so we're going to set the timeline frame rate to 12. Uh, i will not need onion skinning turned on so i will turn that off uh, and all the other stuff should be set up correctly for you. You should have your timeline shortcut keys on. Uh, I'm going to now bring in that strawberry that I uh, created as a normal static layer. So we're going to go on my desktop here and I'm going to find the screenshot of the strawberry and I'm going to just drag it into um, my area here and I'm going to command minus to zoom out. I'm going to make the strawberry the size I want it, which just happens to be exactly the size. Hit return. Um, now I'm going to take this strawberry and move it under the video layer because I'll be using that as a reference. That's why I'm not using onion skinning. Um, I'm going to dial down the opacity on that video layer to about 50 as soon as uh, my little thing stops spinning. Um, and then I'm going to draw that video layer three times. So maybe let's see, 50. Actually, let's make it 25. That's really perfect. Okay, I'm going to go into my brush tool, B for brush, uh, as you can see here. And I'm going to make sure my pencil tool is selected. Uh, Kyle's ultimate pencil number eight. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to the strawberry so it's easy to, to draw. I'm going to switch over to my layer one, which I will call pencil. Probably spelled wrong. And there we go. And now what I'm going to do with the wake up tablet is just draw the strawberry. And again, I'm using the underlaying uh, area as a template. So, and the idea is for you guys to uh, just follow along, but also to um, just kind of um, do this quickly because uh, we're just going to be inputting this. I want you guys, I really want you guys to know how to create a fill layer and those kinds of things. Now you'll see um, that I'm kind of being, I'm going pretty quickly. Uh, I am caring about making sure that everything I do is uh, solid. In other words, no holes in my drawing, right? And now I'm going to move to my next frame with the arrow key and you notice my drawing goes away, but I'm just going to redraw it. Uh, again, since the fruit hasn't changed, it should be fine, but it's going to give it a little bit of wiggle because uh, my drawings are not going to be perfect. Um, and you might ask yourself, well, why not just do two frames if you're going to just want a little wiggle? Uh, and what we found in the past is two frames looks like the fruit is ping-ponging. Now, if you wanted to add some motion like to the leaves here, you could kind of think about how the leaves would vibrate a little bit more. And so you might want to intentionally uh, change those or use some of your animation skills to, to change things around. Okay, that's the second drawing. And then finally, the third drawing, uh, I will go ahead and, and draw this fruit one more time. And then what we're gonna do after we've drawn the fruit outline and we're going to uh, fill it. And this is again, just kind of what we went over in class, but the way I'm doing it is what I want you guys to do from now on, which is to, to select the outside of the fruit and fill it from the outside in uh, by inverting the selection. So this is kind of important. I know it doesn't look different to you right now, but when you see uh, that you didn't fill it correctly, it will look obvious. Okay, so now that I've got three frames, I'm gonna move my play timeline playhead here so that it only loops the first three frames and I'm gonna hit the space bar. And notice how it's bouncing back and forth. 
that means this went a little too close so I'm gonna move this one over and now I have something that looks like it's just looping and it's it's vibrant and interesting so you know you've got something correct I've got my um, my play range here looping I'm gonna not need the strawberry anymore so I'm gonna turn it off and we're gonna create a new layer and that's gonna be our fill layer I'm gonna turn off the background so you can see how this works I'm gonna get a layer a video layer and new blank video layer uh, and we're going to call that fill as you know and we're going to put it under our pencil layer uh, and now what I'm going to do is go to the wand tool W for wand and make sure the magic wand is selected right uh, notice all these things up here anti-alias contiguous 32 that's fine I'm going to select my pencil layer and then click on the outside and if I did everything right you'll see that the marching ants are on the outside of the strawberry which is great we're going to select invert the selection or shift command I and then option command delete the big delete key will fill this in now notice I filled in the pen pencil layer so that I'm going to undo that I want to make sure I'm on the fill layer and then watch what happens to the pencil so sh option command delete and now you can see the pencil line and the fill layers on the outside everything looks pretty good now to get this to be more professional, we would have uh, done what we did in class, which was scooch these lines in a little bit. Um, and uh, But for today, that's fine. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my pencil, use my arrow key to go to my next frame. Notice that it's a different selection. So I'm going to deselect what I got. Uh, go to the wand tool, W, select the outside. Notice that it did select the outside. Invert the selection, shift command I, and then option command delete. And again, I messed up the pencil layer, so go to the fill layer, don't forget, and option command delete. And then you notice we have two frames now, this one and this one, that are filled. Finally, last frame, go to the pencil layer, select the outside. Notice I didn't have to deselect, I just reselected by clicking on the outside. Invert the selection, shift command I, and then go to my fill layer. I remembered this time, option command delete. I now have this. Okay, so because our fill layer is filled and our pencil layer is good, we can now lock our fill layer using our little lock here, and that will lock all the transparent pixels. Perfect. So we're gonna go back to our uh, front, the beginning of our animation here. I'm gonna use my brush tool, B for brush, and then this time I'm going to select a different brush, uh, and I'm going to select, uh, let's try, Kyle's Inkbox Classic Cartoonist uh, brush. I'm going to use the bracket keys to make the brush a little bigger, and then I'm gonna pick a strawberry color. So I think I'll pick this one. And then notice that I can now paint the strawberry, and I'm gonna use the next frame, and I'm painting on the fill layer, uh, and notice that it's not overwriting any of the um, um, pencil tools. Now, if you wanted to add different things to the strawberry, like little seeds and those kinds of things, you could have drawn them in, but it's up to you. But th this is just a basic strawberry, okay? And now I'm gonna change the color to a green. And hit okay. And now I'm gonna go to the fill layer, go to the first frame with the arrow keys, and I'm now gonna fill in the tops. And this is how you do some basic shading. Boom. Now this is what we got so far. If you wanted to add a little bit of shadowing, you could. I could just go back to uh, my color palette here and I could choose this color just by clicking on it. That'll re-choose the color. And if I hit B, uh, this will give me my value and I can darken it a little bit and increase the saturation just a bit. And now I could say the shadow, light's coming from here, so maybe the shadow's under here. And then I could go to the next one and put the shadow under there. And then the next one, the shadow under there. Uh, and now you see that it's a little bit more three-dimensional, right? You can add more things and make it more realistic if you want. But this is good. All right. I'm going to go file, save, just because I don't want to lose this. And then call it uh, straw berry, right? And got it. And now I'm going to export this three frames so that I could use it in motion. And this is important. So go file, export render video what you will get is uh hopefully 
uh, you will get a prompt and I will show you the settings. These settings you need to write down uh, because these are the settings you need for transparent pixels uh, in the background. So you switch it to Adobe um, Media Encoder. Uh, quick time is what you will need to set for transparent pixels. Animation high quality. Document size is correct. Here's where it's important. You have zero, one, and two. That's three things that you've selected your work area from zero, frame zero, to frame one, to frame two. If this says zero to one, then you need to change your play range here. So make sure it has all three frames. Uh, this is super important if you want the pixels. You need to alpha channel straight unmat. So I've got QuickTime, animation, straight, and three frames selected. I'm going to call it straw movie and I'm going to set it someplace. Notice how it's setting it to some crazy place. I don't know where that is. So I'm going to select it and put it on the desktop. Hit choose. Uh, now I see that it is on my desktop and I'm going to render the video. And once you've rendered that, these transparent pixels will be black. So let me show you that right here oh, by double clicking it. And let's see if it opens in QuickTime. And it won't open in QuickTime, but it will open in motion. So know that you've done it correctly uh, if you did all the selections correct. All right, let's open up motion so we can get this uh, fruit to bounce and be done with our project. Now, I'm at my opening area here. My duration is 10 seconds. We talked about 24 frames per second being what we're going to select. I'm going to hit open. And now that makes a brand new uh, motion document. We're going to import our strawberry movie. So I'm just going to select straw, import, and you'll notice the background is black. And you'll notice that if you hit the space bar, it plays for exactly one third of a second or something like that, right? Now, this is the important part. This is a movie and not a static layer. If it were a static layer, it would have filled all 10 seconds, right? Uh, but on a movie, it doesn't. So I want you to select the movie, go to our inspector palette, properties, and everything is the same as before. You've got your position, X, Y, Z. You've got your opacity that you can make more or less opaque. Uh, but here's where it becomes really interesting, the timing area. Go ahead and show that area. And you're going to get all these choices. And notice the end condition is set to none. We're going to select it to loop. And that's going to loop our uh, end condition, currently set to loop zero times. So let's go ahead and jack that up to 100. And notice now it is set to loop 100 times, and now you've got your looping strawberry. Very nice. I'm going to move this back to the beginning, and obviously 100 is too, not enough, so I'm going to move this up until I have, uh, until I fill in everything so that the strawberry is everywhere. There it is. All right, and now we've got 10 seconds of strawberry, just strawberrying, whatever, it's doing nothing. Uh, let's go ahead and add a background just so we can uh, see the strawberry against something white. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool. I'm going to make a rectangle pretty big. I'm going to move it under the strawberry. This is where it gets confusing. You might make a new uh, layer. And now that it's under the strawberry, let's go ahead and just make it a little bit bigger. Got it. And then uh, now move back to our strawberry. So again, the rectangle, we're done. You can lock the rectangle if you don't want it to move. Now you can't touch it anymore and move it. You can only move the strawberry, OK? Uh, let's go back to our strawberry. And we're going to bounce this strawberry. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller uh, using my properties tool, position, uh, scale, and rotation. So let's scale it down a little bit. And we're going to start up here. Uh, let's look at our behaviors. Uh, we've got spin. We've got throw that we know. We have motion path. We have move. Uh, let's see. Do we have oscillation? No. Well, let's just have it. Um, let's go into just some basic keyframing here. So we're going to start with the strawberry up here on frame one. Notice that it's all the strawberry is doing is just just doing whatever. Um, we're going to move our playhead to about halfway to um, like about halfway here. This is about uh, halfway through the animation. And I'm going to now set a keyframe. So in essence, I'm going to take this strawberry and say go from where you started here to someplace else okay so let's go ahead and set a keyframe for position actually let's go back to the beginning and we're going to set a keyframe and notice when you do that at this area notice that on the first frame because that's where I moved it to you've got now a keyframe set 
which is means that no matter what happens, it's going to, whenever it gets to this frame, it's going to jump that strawberry right there. We're going to move it halfway through. And now because it, we had it start, start here, if I were to move it, you'll notice that the path automatically gets made here. That means I started here and now I've created a second keyframe automatically just by moving it. And now watch what happens. The strawberry moves down the entire time, right? And it hits the bottom and it stops because I didn't have it do anything else. Now let's go all the way to the end of the loop and then set our position back to where we started. So we can either move it back to where we started, right? Or you can dial in zero, 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 because uh, I mean at zero for the X position, because uh, that's where we started. The Y, I think we're, I'm not sure where we started with the Y. Let's see, 285.2 and 0 0.05. So we did have 0 0.05. And this is where numbers are helpful, right? Zero. 285.2 so at the end it should be 285.200 so that it starts and ends at the same place now this doesn't look correct because it's linear so we know that we talked about this before how do we get something to be uh, more authentic well we'll we're going to go over that in class with the keyframes a little bit more but at this point know that you have a bouncing uh, strawberry Right. And now we were we we're going to export this strawberry uh, as our finished assignment. And that was about 15 minutes of uh, video. So we're going to go ahead and hit share uh, export movie. Notice how I've not selected anything else other than the strawberry. I mean, nothing right uh, before I hit the share. Go to export movie. Uh, go to my settings. Uh, I want you to set the settings for exporting to just color because we're not going to use the uh, transparent background for this. Uh, and I'm going to export the entire play range, 10 seconds, right? Uh, and let's see, anything else? Uh, render, highest quality, settings, everything else looks good. So we're going to hit render. Uh, we're going to call it straw. Very and we're going to put it on our desktop and then uh, in a, a moment or two this will open and you will see now the strawberry hitting the ground and then coming back up or at least it's oscillating now we could have used oscillation to do this exact same thing but because it's keyframed we're going to have some uh, really nice options uh, about timing uh, in fact let me just open up our keyframe editor so you can see the keyframes that we made uh, right here. So we'll be talking more about uh, the purple line actually. That's our actual keyframe and you saw this. Uh, remember how you saw like make this sh a sharper curve, right? And that allows you to like slow it down and then it speeds up and then it slows back down as it goes higher. And so this is the kind of thing where they, you looked where we saw in the principles of animation how you were able to adjust the curves to get uh, this type of curve to make this bounce look a little more authentic, right? So it's like bouncing hits the ground and then it comes back up. It slows down and then hits the ground, that kind of thing. And you can modify these to each of these keyframes that you created have the ability to have a different slope and you can make this bounce further down. Uh, you can also bring in these keyframes like this and that'll only allow it to bounce like right here. And we'll learn a little bit more about this keyframing thing I'm undoing uh, later on. But the most important thing is that you have uh, this video um, right here. And that's what you will be submitting um, in your assignment inbox as a homework assignment for the weekend. Uh, I don't care what free it is, so you can have fun, but you can see this is as basic as it can get. Okay.